A number of years ago, it was hard to get children to talk about books. We've tried so many things over my time here as head teacher. And I think we did that because we just wanted them reading. And what I would call that is that's reading compliance. So that's just, I've done 20 minutes of reading, Mr. Harrison. There's my chart. Either give me a sticker or, um, you know, don't. <laughs> You know, don't, don't sort of have a go at me, so to speak. And then you speak to the kids about books, you do pupil interviews, and you realise that, yes, they were reading, but with very little enthusiasm or engagement or desire to seek out authors in, in greater depth. And that's what we have now. Children can come down into my room. I have, I have books that I share in my room, and they will hold discussions with each other where they'll compare between books. They'll talk about, if you like that, you'll probably like this. Um... And, and, and they can probably now, being honest, in fact, they really can talk with a greater depth of authors than I can. Um, and I'll take book recommendations from the children. So their ability now to compare themes, characters, likes, dislikes is so much better than it ever was. And then that communicates into the writing. The power of reading stands out compared to other literacy schemes I've used in the past. Um, it like outshines them. I've taught for 16 years and it's by far the best scheme I've used. Um, it puts children's enjoyment at the centre of everything. It's not, it's not focused solely on um, just the final written output, output and the success criteria, which was the case for a number of years and it made the whole writing process quite onerous and quite boring for children, as, as exciting as we tried to make it. Um, it's got wider curriculum themes threaded through it like geography, history, citizenship, um, so it kind of covers a lot of other areas as well, so it's not just English as a standalone subject. Um, it provides lots of opportunities for immersion and exploration, which is really, really important for a number of the children that work that come to our school because they've got deprivation of experience, they come from socio-economic de deprived communities, so they don't get to have those exciting days out sometimes or lots of real world experiences. So the books give them that and then they get to participate in role play and uh, activities that enthuse them, which then feeds into their writing process. So first of all, the book choice and the recommendations from CLP are fantastic. They, they, you know, they're, they're all the themes that you're looking for in today's world, particularly in today's world, around diversity and tolerance and characters of different backgrounds. And when you think about the school that we serve at Miriam Lord, we serve a, um, um, people always call it a multicultural school here. It's not, it's very monocultural. And we serve predominantly 90 to 92% Southeast Asian uh, Pakistani pupils. They need to see themselves in books or at least an element of their lives in books. They need to be able to access books that they can connect to and that will, that will draw them in. And I think the book choices that we get from here do that. And, and, and they give them a, a bigger hook than certainly the book choices I had when I was growing up. I think the programme supports uh, beginners to English and those children with English as additional language because it isn't solely focused on writing from the offset. So that immersion aspect of the various tasks allows everyone to access uh, the text that you're looking at and the the discussion side of it, the role play side, it actually encourages good oracy skills from those pupils because they get to interact with their peers, they have a chance to um, explain what their thoughts and feelings are without feeling limited by success criteria uh, uh, because it's quite open in the classroom, it's a safe environment. So I think it's had a big impact on them. So when we introduce Power of Reading, I think I first of all thought we could just download the sequences and pay our membership and make it work. And to an extent, y you can a little bit, really. When we first introduced it, my approach was uh, arrived back from a training session that I'd attended, did a staff meeting that evening and said, pick a book, pick a sequence and teach it and see what you think of it. And it had a really early impact in terms of enthusiasm and engagement. But the training behind it, I would now say, is essential. And even though we're in, we'll be moving into our fifth year of Power of Reading next year, we continue to send two people a year on the training. Because as comprehensive as the sequences are, and in the hands of a, of a, of a skilled teacher, they can really bring them to life. Without the training behind it, you miss the principles, you miss the why, you miss the, the, really the coherence around Power of Reading. 
But um, what we seem to be getting from the whole book approach would be when children come to writing or, or reading or talking about stories, they've got the depth, they've got the themes uh, of everything that they then need to write about. I think what also attracts us um, to Power of Reading, what's worked for us would be, it's not a scheme. So it's not a day one, week one, lesson one, that sort of approach. Whilst it does give you a good sequence of um, lessons to go through and approaches to take, it's still left with the autonomy of teachers to be able to make that work for their specific cohort, um, for the needs of their class at that point. But it's that ability to immerse children in really good books by really good authors um, containing themes that are relevant to them that we think over the past four, four years plus of doing Power of Reading have had the biggest impact on our children here.